Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. Here are the top 20 physical signs that you have high testosterone based on science. The 2D to 4D ratio, I'm going to put that one out okay. Why? Because it's only during fetal development that this becomes a reliable measure of testosterone, right? After fetal development and especially after puberty, you know, this no longer tracks your testosterone levels. And for those who don't know, the 2D to 4D ratio is simply a measure of the length of your pinky compared to your index finger, right? So if your pinky is longer than your index finger, then there's a big chance that during fetal development, you are exposed to a lot of testosterone. That's why men have a lower 2D to 4D ratio than women do. And that's also why Neanderthals who were swimming in testosterone have a crazy, crazy low 2D to 4D ratio, right? But remember, you can't look at that ratio as an adult and track your testosterone levels. Right, if I inject you with 600 grams of testosterone, your 2D to 4D ratio is not going to move. Next, acne, bad. Yes, obviously, is linked to testosterone levels. Testosterone does play a role in sebum production, but it is not a very strong relationship. Right, perfect example is a lot of women get acne and you look at the testosterone levels, you know, for the most part, are stable. Uh, another example is I could put you on grams of steroids. One person is going to have crazy acne. The other person is barely going to have it, right? So there's genetic factors, environmental factors, things like that. So it's not a good measure of your testosterone levels. I have clients with super high testosterone levels and have zero acne. Next, the length of your arms, right? So your wingspan, especially your ape index. It's okay, right? Mainly because, yes, it is driven by testosterone. Testosterone plays a huge role in your wingspan, which is obviously why men have a bigger wingspan than women on average. But once again, after puberty, the relationship falls off, right? This is mainly during puberty before your growth plates fuse. But during puberty, yes, this is very, very, very predictive of testosterone levels. I mean, it's also a reason why ethnic groups and populations that have very, very high testosterone levels also have uh, bigger ape indices, you know, bigger wingspans on average. Next, balding, bad. That is not a strong predictor of testosterone levels. It is too influenced by intracellular 5-alpha reductase, which obviously impacts intracellular DHT, and also environmental factors, such as inflammation and diet, and obviously genetics. Yes, testosterone obviously plays a huge role because without testosterone, you're not going to have a lot of DHT. But there are so many instances and studies where you inject people with a crap ton of steroids, a crap ton of testosterone, and in some cases even DHT, and they still don't lose their hair, right? So there's a genetic factor, there's an environmental factor. Now, again, testosterone obviously plays a role, that's why it's called androgenic alopecia, but it is not a good predictor of testosterone levels, which is what this video is about. Remember, there's also a distinction between testosterone levels in your blood and testosterone levels in the cells. Not to mention, you also got to factor androgen receptor sensitivity and things like that. The final reason why it's also not a big predictor of uh, testosterone levels is during puberty, that's when you have the highest testosterone levels you'll ever have on average. But yet, we don't see teenagers with their hair falling out left and right, right? If that was the case, we would all go bald during puberty when we have this crazy spike in testosterone. Next, body hair, right? Chest hair, back hair, things like that. I'm going to put that at fucking amazing. It's a very good predictor of testosterone levels, mainly because... It works even after puberty, right? Even after puberty, if I if you get castrated, if somebody cuts your balls off, yeah, your testosterone levels will plummet and your body hair will also drop. Second reason why it's ranked higher is because, yes, it does follow a dose-response relationship with testosterone, right? If you inject women uh, with a crap ton of testosterone, some of them will start growing body hair. Uh, the reason why it's not higher, again, is because obviously testosterone and the androgen receptor are not the sole drivers, right? There's also genetics, there's DHT, 5 alpha reductase, polymorphisms, things like that. Next, bone density. I'm going to put that at fucking amazing, mainly because, yes, even after puberty, uh, testosterone does play a role on bone density. It does have a dose-response relationship. The only reason why it's not higher is because estradiol also plays a huge role, right, estrogen. In fact, people that have mutations, genetic mutations, where they have a lot of testosterone and no estrogens, um, tend to have horrible bone density, right? So that's the only reason why it's not higher is because... Yes, T plays a huge role, but so does estradiol. Next, shoulder width, right? So how broad your shoulders are, right? How long your clavicles are. I'm going to put that at okay, mainly because, like I said earlier, this is mainly during puberty. After puberty, whether your testosterone goes up and down, you're not going to see a noticeable effect on your shoulder width, right? But during puberty, yes, this would be an I'm about to not category, right? Testosterone does increase 
uh, your clavicle width. Next, your bra ridge. See, if this was puberty, this would be an I'm about to not category, right? This is very, very, very strongly correlated with testosterone levels, again, during puberty, which is the reason why men have this crazy bra ridge. So do Neanderthals, um, whereas women don't on average. But after puberty, it no longer tracks uh, your testosterone levels. So I'm going to put that at okay. In fact, I tell people all the time, if you want to see if somebody has a ton of testosterone and is sensitive to the testosterone in his body, because remember, you can have a lot of testosterone, but very low testosterone activity, depending on your androgen receptor sensitivity and your antiandrogens. Um, look at their bra ridge, right? Especially during puberty, like I said. Men that have crazy, crazy bra ridges, more often than not, during puberty, were very, very sensitive to testosterone and also had a lot of testosterone during that time. Uh, There's no coincidence that if you look at most MMA fighters, especially the elite ones that have crazy bra ridges on average again is because during puberty their body was spitting out testosterone like crazy and they were sensitive to it next foot length again if this was during puberty it'll be ranked higher but after puberty testosterone no longer affects how big your feet are all right but yes testosterone does play a role uh, which is again why men have bigger feet than women even if you equate for height and size right testosterone plays a big role in that Next, your hand grip strength. If you watch my videos, you already know where this is going, especially if you keep up with the scientific literature. I'm about to nut category. That is one of the biggest predictors of your testosterone levels and your testosterone sensitivity and your net androgen status, both during puberty and after puberty, right? Even if you don't train your grip strength at all, increasing your testosterone levels significantly will dramatically increase your grip strength. And the reverse is also true dropping your testosterone levels keeping everything else equal will drastically decrease your grip strength that's why i recommend that every single man has a dynamometer or a way to track their grip strength because it is so so goddamn accurate and it's so easy to test too you know you could literally just do an activity that drops your t levels instantly and then squeeze the dynamometer and you'll see a huge drop in your grip strength and vice versa you could do an activity that temporarily shoots up your testosterone levels and you will notice your grip strength instantly go up, right? Even though your muscle mass didn't change within those uh, few seconds. Very underrated tool uh, to track your testosterone levels. Everyone should have that. And no, I'm not sponsored. No, I don't have any Amazon links. You guys know that it goes against my channel's principles. So buy one for your own health, for your own good. Next, hand size. Yes, again, if this was doing puberty, this would be ranked a lot higher because testosterone does affect hand size, which is, once again, why men have bigger hands than women on average, even if they're the same height and size. But after puberty, it no longer plays a role, right? I can inject you with 2,000 grams of roids, and that's not going to make your hands bigger. Next, how long your feet are, right? The length of your feet. Again, during puberty, this would be higher, but after puberty, testosterone no longer influences the length of your uh, your lower limbs. So I'm going to put that in okay. But remember, during puberty, higher testosterone activity, on average, will link to longer limbs next how big your shoulders are how big your shoulders are after training without training after steroid use without steroid use fucking amazing testosterone does play a very very important role in uh the size of your shoulders mainly because of all the myonuclei and androgen receptors that are around the shoulder area right the only reason why it's not higher is because uh, myostatin also plays a role. IGF-1 also plays a role. It's not just testosterone that's the sole driver, right? There's also a big genetic component. Um, but all else equal, yes, men that are very sensitive to androgens will, on average, you know, have bigger, bolder shoulders, even if they're trained the exact same way as the person who does not. Same thing with traps. The exact same logic. There's a lot of androgen receptors in the neck, trap, and shoulder area. Which is why a lot of guys can train for years, have average traps. Next thing you know, they inject a fuck ton of roids, keep their training the same, and then their traps just blow the fuck up, right? A lot of androgen receptors there, a lot of myonuclei as well, right? And it's not just in humans. You see the same thing in uh, animals that have to compete for mates, uh, especially red deer, right? During mating season, their necks and traps just blow the fuck up, right? And it's mainly driven by testosterone. Once you castrate them, once you get rid of the testicles and the testosterone drops, so does the neck and trap region. And if you guys want, I could make future videos explaining the evolutionary reason behind this. But it's mainly because of combat. Next, nose size. Yes, there's a big link between testosterone and how big your nose is, which once again is why men have bigger noses than women on average, even if they have the same size and height. But once again, after puberty, the link disappears. So I'm going to put that in okay. 
but during puberty absolutely testosterone is linked to how big your nose is as well as heart. same thing with penis size right how long your mushroom tip is is strongly linked obviously to your testosterone dht androgen receptor sensitivity also igf1 and growth hormone play a role but once again this is only during puberty and obviously during fetal development after that the link disappears right so if i if your testosterone levels go from 300 to a thousand nanogram per deciliter after puberty that's not going to influence your penis size uh, at least not significantly right maybe just a little bit but not a lot um, but during puberty or if you're female obviously then yeah you know, when women transition or when they get injected with a lot of testosterone obviously the clitoris starts to, to grow for, for those of you guys who don't know your penis is pretty much a clitoris right it's doing fetal development that when testosterone goes up and i can make a video explaining you know how the body changes doing fetal development but long story short yes your penis is pretty much a clitoris that was turned into a penis doing uh fetal development under the action of testosterone and uh, activation of the SOI gene and things like that, right? Especially DHT, right? And again, that's mainly because DHT activates the androgen receptor better. Uh, so I'm going to put that okay for the reasons I mentioned. Next, muscle mass. I'm going to put that at fucking amazing for the same reasons I mentioned earlier, right? After puberty, obviously there's a dose response relationship between testosterone and muscle mass. The only reason why it's not higher is because, again, other genes play a role, such as myostatin, phylostatin, activin, 2B receptor, things like that. Right, and obviously I'll drift one as well. Uh, but obviously it's gonna be fucking amazing since even if you don't work out, being injected with massive amounts of steroids or anything that activates the injury receptors such as SOMS will increase your muscle mass. Right, so it's a good, reliable way to measure testosterone activity, androgen receptor sensitivity is just by looking at your muscle mass, whether you train or not. Obviously if you train, it's just gonna take it to the next level, but you get the point. Next, this one is very underrated, surprisingly, but speed sprinting speed i'm about to nut category yes there is a very very strong relationship between testosterone mainly androgen status so that includes again dht and your androgen receptor sensitivity and how fast you are which is why once again even if you equate for size training height weight muscle mass and length men consistently destroy women uh, when it comes to sprinting, right? Just look at the records. You know, men destroy the 100 meter sprint like it's nothing, right? They destroy the female record in high school, in college. And again, it's the same reasons as hand grip strength, right? Testosterone plays a very powerful role in your ability to recruit fast twitch muscle fibers, in your ability to flood them with calcium, in your action potentials. Again, I could make a whole video on the role that testosterone plays in strength independent of muscle mass. Right, so not only testosterone increases muscle mass, but even if you remove that pathway, testosterone still has indirect roles in power output. So yes, if you increase your testosterone levels dramatically, you will notice an increase in speed. Obviously, simply because you're able to recruit uh, your high threshold motor units better, even if your muscle mass stays the same. Now you're not going to turn into Usain Bolt, but you get the point. Next, your jawline, right? That square jawline, that facial structure. Again, I'm going to put that at okay, simply because it dies off after puberty, right? The relationship falls off. During puberty, absolutely. Very high testosterone levels, high DHT, high androgen receptor activity is definitely gonna give you that. I mean, that's why it's called a masculine face, right? It's gonna give you that crazy jawline that so many of us wish we had. Um, but uh, after puberty, nope, no more link. Next, strength. Again, I'm about to nut category for the reasons I explained earlier. Testosterone directly increases motor unit recruitment and this happens very fast, within seconds to minutes. So many experiments on this. And again, this is independent of muscle mass. Even if you keep muscle mass the same, increasing testosterone will increase your power output and your strength. And decreasing your testosterone intraday, even within seconds, right? Meaning your muscle obviously didn't change, right? You're not going to lose muscle mass in seconds. Um, decreasing testosterone will decrease your strength instantly. Next, your testicle size. That's actually a bad predictor of testosterone levels, right? Because, in fact, I mean, just think about it. Look at bodybuilders, right? If you inject a crap ton of steroids, your balls actually shrink even though you're swimming in androgens, right? Testicle size is mainly affected by pituitary output, right? So mainly FSH. Does testosterone play a role? I, absolutely. I'm not saying it doesn't play a role, but it's not as big as most people think it is, right? You could have huge balls even after puberty and low testosterone levels, and you could have high testosterone levels and small or decent sized balls, right? So the relationship is there, but it's a weak relationship. FSH and how sensitive your balls are to FSH 
is uh, one of the biggest predictors of testicle size. Next, jumping ability, especially vertical jump and also long jump. I'm about to nut category. Testosterone has a very powerful direct effect on your ability to jump high. Mainly because, once again, testosterone drastically increases motor unit recruitment, calcium entry into the cells by a rapid non-genomic pathway, meaning testosterone is doing this without even interacting with your DNA, right? Which is why it happens within seconds. And again, that's also why men destroy women in uh, vertical jump world records, even if you factor in muscle mass and size. And last but not least, beard. I'm going to put that in fucking amazing, mainly because even after puberty, testosterone still has a role in your beard. Now, the reason why it's not higher is because you also got to factor in genetics and DHT and intracellular 5-alpha reductase activity. But for the most part, in men and women, right, if you inject women with testosterone, what happens, right? There's a lot of them start growing facial hair. Um, so testosterone definitely plays a direct role in uh, beard growth, right? And obviously, there's an evolutionary mechanism at play here, which I can make future videos about. And the reverse is also true. If you have a big beard and then you get castrated, you crush your testosterone levels to zero, you're not going to lose your entire beard, but a lot of it is going to fall off, right? The same thing is true in lions. I think I made a post about that on Instagram, how big and dark a lion's mane is, which is almost the equivalent of the human male's beard, is related to their testosterone levels. If you castrate a lion, if you crush a lion's testosterone to zero, their mane completely falls off. And if you increase the lion's testosterone levels, their mane grows. Same thing with female lions. If you increase the female lion's testosterone levels, she starts to grow a mane, right? Which is pretty badass. But anyway, guys, that's it. Don't forget to subscribe for more, like the video, share it to Bussiago. See you in the comments.